In this video, we're going to talk about uh, angles, how we can name angles, how we can measure angles, and how we can convert between the different measurements um, for angles. Um, so, what is an angle? You've seen an angle before. Well, um, a good definition of an angle is that um, it's a ray. So, a ray is a line that has a beginning, a line that has a beginning point, um, and continues forever. Um, and if we rotate that ray to this position, it's as though those two rays form an angle. Um, so this point down here, we could call the vertex. Okay, so um, a simple definition of an angle is the rotation of a ray about some point. We call that point the vertex. Now, the ray could be, in this particular ray, we uh, rotated um, counterclockwise. Um, but just as easily, we could rotate a ray uh, clock in the clockwise direction. So let's say our ray is pointing down. If I rotate to this point, uh, let's go a little further there. Okay, we rotated that ray in the clockwise direction. Um, now there are many different ways that we can uh, name an angle. Um, so uh, naming angles, uh, naming ang so typically we'll name an angle with three points. So let's call this A. B and C. We could call this angle ABC. Um, as long as the B value, or the B point, which is the vertex, as long as that's in between A and C, <coughs> um, it's appropriate. So just as easily, we could have named this angle CBA, as long as B, again, is in the middle. Um, instead of writing angle, we can use this little angle notation like this, so angle A, B, C. Um, or we could very um, just as easily call this angle B. Now, when we just have one angle, um, we can just name that angle by its vertex. However, if we have, let's say, I have this set up, I have angle A, or point A, B, C, and then D here. Now, if we're talking about um, this angle right here, we would call that angle um, A, B, D, or we could call that angle D, B, A. It would not be appropriate to just call this angle B because angle B, well, point B is a vertex of, of this red angle, but it's also the vertex of this angle here. So again, don't just call any, don't just call either the red angle or the B angle, angle B, because B is the vertex of two separate angles. We would want to call that blue angle, either angle D, uh, D, B, C, um, or angle C, B, D. Now we want to talk about the different types of angles that we're going to see, and the three main types are right angles, acute angles, or obtuse angles. Now a right angle measures 90 degrees. It'll have this little uh, box there along the vertex. So a right angle is um, equal to 90 degrees. Uh, an acute angle um, is less than 90. Um, example, so um, an acute angle is going to be smaller than what we see in that uh, right angle. So the ray is not uh, rotated nearly as much as a right angle. And then lastly, we could have an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is greater than 90. Um, so an example would be, well, if this ray is rotated beyond... 
um, what that right angle was uh, rotated at. So that would be an example of an obtuse angle. So how do we actually measure an angle? Well, there's two main ways that we will measure angles here. Um, one way is um, probably what you're most familiar with, and that's with a degree measurement. Um, so technically, a degree is um, 1 360th of a circle. Okay, That's what uh, 1 degree... Uh, represents 1 360th um, of a circle. Um, so if we're talking about 180 degrees, well, that is 180 out of 360 possibilities, which is one half of a circle. Um, and we'll be working with degrees um, throughout the class. Uh, a second way that we can talk about the measurement of an angle is um, called a radian. Before we can get to what a radian is, we need to talk about what um, a central angle is. Now, if we have a circle, and I have an angle that um, is centered, or the vertex is centered at, in the middle of a circle. so. Let's call that angle in there theta. So what we would say here is theta is a central angle here. Now if theta um, intercepts an arc that is equal to the radius, what that means is theta equals 1 radian. So what is this trying to say? Well, um, what it's saying is this arc right here is the arc that is getting intercepted by that angle theta. So what it's saying is this distance right here, this distance, what we're saying is if this distance on that arc is equal to the distance of this radius in the circle, the distance from here to here, that's the radius, if that distance of the radius is equal to the length of the arc, then that means theta is equal to um, one radian. Now you may not have talked about arc length much in previous classes, but you have probably talked about um, circumference. And the formula for circumference is c is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. Well, pi is about equal to 3.14, so 2 times 3.14 is about 6.28 times the radius. So what this is saying is the circumference of a circle is equal to a, a little more than six times whatever the radius, the length of the radius is. So the important things to remember here are 360 degrees makes up a circle, um, a little more than six radii make up the, the circumference of a circle. Um, and that we can measure an angle in two different with two different uh, units of measure, measure, either degrees or radians. Now, what we want to be able to do is convert between degrees and radians. So, to do so, we're going to use um, that formula for the circumference of a circle, two pi r. Now, let's suppose that the radius is equal to one. Now that would tell us that the circumference is equal to 2 pi times 1. Well, anything times 1 is just itself, so the circumference is equal to 2 pi. In other words, all the way around the circle has a distance of 2 pi. Now, we also know that the distance around a circle has a measurement of 360 degrees. 
So what we have here, this is kind of like the radian measure uh, around a circle, and this is the degree measure around a circle. So what we would say is that 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. Um, if I divide both sides by 2, we get pi is equal to 180 degrees. So we're going to use this, pi equals 180 degrees, as our conversion factor. So um, if we want to go from degrees into radians, what we're going to do is we start with, um, let's say, x degrees. What we do is we multiply that by pi over 180 degrees. And what would happen is when we multiply, these degrees are going to cancel. And we're going to end up with something in radians. I need to put that there. Now, conversely, if we want to go from radians to degrees, what we do is we start with, let's call it y radians. What we do is we multiply by, this time we flip the conversion factor. So we're going to say 180 degrees over pi radians. The radians are going to cancel and we're going to end up with something in degrees. So let's look at a few examples um, for converting between angles um, that should say radians to degrees. Let's change that. Radians to degrees. So we know that an angle is in radians. Either it will be labeled RAD for radians, or typically if an angle is in radians, it will have a pi value in it. So let's look at a first example. If we have pi over 3, well, again, because that has pi in it, we assume that that is in radians. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conversion factor. Since we're going into degrees, I want degrees in the numerator, and I want radians, which is pi in the denominator. So when we multiply straight across, I get 180 pi over 3 pi, well, those pi's cancel. We could have done that in the first step. So we get 180 over 3, which is 60 degrees. So pi over 3 is equal to 60 degrees. A second one here, 3 pi over 4. Again, we're going from radians into degrees. Since we're going into degrees, we want degrees in the numerator. We'll cancel those pi's out. 4 and 180, I can divide each of those by, what, 4? So I get 1 and 45. So just going straight across, 3 times 45 is 135 degrees. 1 times 1 down here is just 1, so 135 degrees. Um, and then lastly, what do we have? 1 radian. Now this angle measurement does not have the pi value in it, but because we have RAD, we know that this is in radians, going into degrees, put degrees in the numerator, radians in the denominator. Um, now, I didn't have this in the, the previous examples, but when it says pi, that has a unit of radians, so that radian cancels. So what we end up with is 180 over pi, and if you had a calculator, we could do 180 degrees divided by pi, and we get about 57.3 degrees. And then lastly, we want to be able to convert from degrees to radians. Now we do this in the opposite, direct, the opposite way of what we were just doing. Um, so if our first angle is 30 degrees, we're going to multiply that by pi over 180 degrees. Um, so we'd get 30 pi over 180, the zeros cancel, and then 3 over 18 is 1 over 6. So this would be pi over 6 in radians. Um, second example, 90 degrees, that's going to be pi over 180, 180 and 90, that's 1 over 2. So this is going to be pi over 2. 
uh, number three, we have negative 225 degrees. Again, I'm starting in degrees. I want to convert into radians, so I put the radian um, in the numerator, degrees in the denominator, so I get negative 225 pi over 180. Um, let's see, I can divide both of those. Um, hmm, well, I know 5, so let's see what we get. We get negative 45 pi over 5 goes in 36 times. Okay, and then it looks like I can divide each of these by 9. So we're going to get negative 5 pi over 4. That'll be our radian measure. And then lastly, we have 55 degrees, starting the degrees going into radians, so I want radians in the numerator. Um, I can divide 55 and 180 by 5. I get 11 and 36. We get 11 pi over 36. So that would be the radian uh, angle measurement.